the first question. Um, I know that you have a background in wrestling, mm-hmm. and it looks like you were pretty successful as a youth wrestler. Um, yeah. What was your what was the thing that attracted you or or you know got you excited about that kind of competition? So actually, when I was little, I started wrestling and I started doing ballet at the exact same time. Okay. And for whatever reason, I wanted nothing to do with ballet. Um, I had been going to my brother's practices since I was born. Um, he started wrestling when he was five and he's four years older than me. So I basically grew up in the wrestling room and it didn't really register to me that there was no other girls doing it. Um, it just kind of seemed like what everyone was doing. So I wanted to get in on the fun. Yeah, right. And like back then, there were there weren't a lot of girls doing it. That was that was the exact same way that I had the, that I had to come up because mm-hmm. my brother started in third grade. I was in kindergarten. We weren't allowed to wrestle till third grade, but I was at practice every day with him mm-hmm. with, with with him being my dad. My mom didn't want me in the house, so <laughs> I went to practice and I was wrestling in kindergarten. So I was like apparently under the radar for the first two years. Same mm-hmm. way. So yeah. I watched a couple, I watched a couple, I watched on YouTube, I kind of watched you wrestle early just to kind of, just to kind of get mm-hmm. familiar. Um, and I saw you wrestling other girls was mm-hmm. when you wrestled in high school, did you wrestle in just girls or do you wrestle with boys as well? Um, so in high school, I think I only had two matches against girls. Oh. I ended up with like 143 wins um, wow. in <laughs> Ohio. And so I mainly wrestled in Ohio and Pennsylvania. So I would say. That's an impressive record. Oh yeah, it's two uh, two wrestling hotbeds right there. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. powerhouse states. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just we just we just interviewed uh, not too long ago um, Antoine, Antoine Pugh. Do you know who he is? He would have been a couple of years younger than him. You, know, he's an Ohio kid. Um, no, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, I think he's like probably he's he's gonna be he's a senior in college now, so okay. he's a few years younger than you. But again, he was like one of those big names in youth during high school. I mean, youth in high school in Ohio. So I just thought maybe you'd know the name. Um, so, I, so you were very successful in high school, obviously. And then you took it on to Olympic trials, mm-hmm. right? And yes. tell us a little bit about, about that level of, of training and that level of competition that you experienced there. Because even though the hotbed in Pennsylvania and Ohio is high, now you're getting people just the elite of the elite mm-hmm. going to that competition. Um, So if I'm going to be completely honest with you, my story is completely different than any story that you're ever going to hear with anybody. So I I, so I started wrestling, like I said, like I learned how to crawl, learn how to walk, run, wrestle. So um, by the time that I went to college, I got a very good scholarship for wrestling and I ended up dropping out. Uh, College was not for me. So come around uh 2016 uh (laughs) about three days before the last trials qualifier um the uh sign up was done I decided I was gonna go for it and I'd been doing this my entire life I might as well try to live the dream and I went out there I pinned everybody in the first round to the trials um and then I got to the um for the qualifier and then I got to the Olympic trials and as I suspected um, my, I got so lucky as to drop Clarissa Chun for my first match because um, I went to last Olympic, last chance qualifiers. So of course I was going to get yeah. the worst draw. Um, I went there and I ended up, the only person that I lost to was Clarissa Chun. I lost to her twice. I ended up beating everybody else by pin or by um, um, tech. Tech, yep. Yeah, I saw a match you text somebody. But that, that's why I knew that. <laughs> yeah, and I think I, I think I had a tech pin as well. Um, there you go. Yeah, I kind of went out and I just had a lot of fun. Um, I had never wrestled on such a big stage before. Mm-hmm. So like being on this mat and then hearing next to me like David Taylor, Dake, or whoever is wrestling and like the crowd is going crazy for my throws. Like whoa. That's wild! Like it was, it was I was living the dream. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. And what? And so that was 2016. What year would you have been in college? Um, I graduated in 2013. So okay. So um, what, between 2013 and 2016, what were you doing wrestling wise to to be able to get in there and and kick butt? <laughs> I actually stopped wrestling completely, but wow. I started doing mixed martial arts. So. Okay. 
Um, if you know anything about jujitsu, um, yeah. jujitsu is very similar to wrestling, um, but also quite different. Um, and then also at the same time, judo is quite similar to wrestling. So I was practicing other martial arts in the meantime that definitely helped level up my wrestling. Awesome. That's cool. Can I, can I, 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 I wanted to take a new question and I want to bring it back a little bit because let, let's talk a little bit. You, you said that you were, uh, you know, not many girls in Ohio were wrestling. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about beginning wrestling in high school or like wrestling in high school in Ohio as a girl. Um, that's the stigmas you had to overcome. I'm, I'm sure you got those side eye looks. I'm <laughs> sure there had to be a lot of like self-reflection and pride growing at that time we've got a lot of young kids who even even the boys you know are nervous to go out there right they don't have a lot of muscle definition they're brand new to the sport we've got new wrestlers coming in every year who start in, in the middle of high school um we've got a girl who's just tried to come out for our team this year unfortunately didn't, didn't have the season but just talk a little bit about how you were mentally and how you had to mentally strengthen yourself to be able to overcome all that and um, you know, just kind of deal with those obstacles in front of you at that young age to build you up to being comfortable going to the Olympic trials? Um, okay, so I would say that overcoming that mental aspect had had to happen a lot younger than um, anything with high school or middle school. I would be five years old walking out onto the mat and I would have a have a dad telling their kid to hurt me because girls aren't supposed to wrestle. I remember specifically um, one tournament being in the back and um, warming up for my for my match and they were going to send us out to the mat that we were going to and the kid was like hey can you send us over to this mat my dad is running the table I really want him to see me beat this girl and so we went over there and I three-quartered him in less than a minute and th this is stuff that I've just I've had to just deal with um I know that I'm putting myself out there being different. Um, I've always been different. So I just had to realize that it's okay. And um, I'm going to get slack from everybody, um, especially the boys. Um, and also being a girl, you have to know, like I was prepared from a young age, like girls, we have hip strength, boys, they have upper body, they have lower body. If we, if we learn how to manipulate some hips, we're going to win almost every single match. Big facts. Yeah. Big facts. So how did uh how how did that change like your drive? Like what was was that was that was that a big driver where it was was it more of a self pride thing? Like you know you know I can do it. I can keep up with you. Or was it like a was it kind of like a you know you don't think I can watch this type of thing? Um, I always so ever since I can remember, I've always been a winner. I've always had a drive to win the second that I was told that I wasn't supposed to be doing something, all right, I'm going to take it. And I'm going to run with it. Realistically, it was never supposed to go as far as it did. But like, as soon as I got to like, maybe like fifth grade, people were like, oh, are you going to continue? Are you going to do this in high school? I'm like, well, probably yeah. think you'll phase out of it, right? Like yeah. Yeah. And like somewhere along the line, I met um, Tomio, um, Tom Tomio. And I met his sister, Aaron Tomio, and they brought it to my attention that I could be in the Olympics. And uh, yeah, from there, it just kind of, you know, it was never really a pride thing. I guess it just kind of took over my life and it became what I was good at. Um, I wasn't attracted to anything in school, everything with martial arts. Or Honestly, I wanted to do karate when I was little, but my mom said I only had time for wrestling. <laughs> so, you know, just one last question about, about that mindset that you had back then. When people said like, you know, hey, that's, uh, you know, go beat that girl, go beat her up because she's a girl and she doesn't belong here or whatever. Was, yeah. was your mindset, I want to go out there and destroy that person because they have that thought? Or is it like, hey, I, I just, I know I can compete with them. I just want to survive. What, what was your mentality? Um, I already knew that I was going to beat this person. I was just, if they had this bad view towards me, I was going to make sure that they knew that I was that much better. Um, this did end up carrying over until like high school. Um, by that time, a lot of the guys around me, they all knew who I was and they would end up wrestling me much harder than they would wrestle any of the boys because they knew how good I was. Um, but I mean, still, like I would, I would go to weigh-ins and they'd be like, oh, Kanye brought a girl. Like, oh, it's so funny. They have their girl leading the warm-ups and stuff like that. Um, but it just kind of let my wrestling do the talking. And as a follow-up, 
you know, now that you've been in this sport and you were talking about, we're talking about being in high school in 2013, we're talking about Olympic trials in 2016, it's now 2021. Um, that sport has changed dramatically. I mean, it's blown up. It's, you know, to be honest with you, as a high school wrestling coach, he's been in this for a long time. You know, it's given a, a breath of like mm -hmm. real life to the sport mm -hmm. of wrestling. And without it, we might not even be where we are, right? So um, how do you how do you feel with, about yourself and being kind of, you know, you're one of that pioneer crew of people who don't, how do you, how do you feel about that? And, and, you know, how does it feel to have young girls looking up to you as a role model? Honestly, the, the little girls looking up to me as a role model is kind of what I'm still doing all of this for. Um, it makes me so happy to, to go back and to see all of these new wrestlers that are, that are joining in around Ohio and Pennsylvania and then everywhere else. Cause like, honestly, it's just so inspiring seeing all these little girls just have this opportunity that I worked so hard to pave the way for that. I was one of the pioneers. Um, I couldn't be more happy. And I also, I, I can't wait until um, there's a woman's Greco. I can't wait until just to see what else is coming. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, be with being a pioneer, um, you know, there's always a target on your back a little bit mm -hmm. and knowing, I'm, and it seems like from right off, right off the jump, you know, you knew that that target was there. Like you, mm -hmm. you heard people talking about it. Like, there she is. Like, let's get her. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a kid in the, like sounds like some schoolyard stuff but mm -hmm. um so how did that affect like your mindset for your training like what type of training were you doing and then as you progressed to the each level you know going to the olympics uh, high school then the olympics and now you're in, in, in mixed martial arts what type of habits did you have to create to continue your training at that at that level because you knew people were hungry hungry to beat you you had a hundred plus wins. So, you know, you know, you, they were coming out. So like, what does it look, what did it look like then? And what does it look like now? Um, honestly, now that I am the champion of the world, it yeah. feels the same. The target is on my back again, and it only makes me work so much harder. Um, it, I've always known that I was going to be the best and I've always been the best at everything that I do. So, um, at the end of the day, it drives me, um, to keep making waves and to keep um, establishing my name and paving a way for the young girls. Um, honestly, I spend more time in the gym than I do anywhere else. I am always training or I'm always coaching and I have at this point devoted my life to martial arts. So <laughs> I've got some questions about that, but, but you've mentioned twice that you knew that you were gonna be the best, right? You knew it. Where'd, okay. where'd that come from? Did, did, was that just inter internally inside of you? Or did you get that from yeah. your parents? Or you get from people around you? Or your bro you know, where'd that come from, do you think? Because that's, you know, that is the secret sauce, right? I mean, if we, can figure right. Out, if we could figure out how to get everybody to have that mentality, that belief, it'd be great. Some people have it internally, and mm -hmm. some people, we gotta figure out how to, how to, how to get them there. Um. I've always known. I've always known yeah. that I'm great. Um, I'm not great in, in the normal ways that most people are. Like, I'm not like a straight A student, nothing like that. But I found what I'm great at. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make the most of my life in the best way that I can. So was you have a passion for this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And a passion, yes. having a passion usually makes you great. Did you mm -hmm. have the passion? Was the passion first or the greatness first? Um. I think the passion was always there. Yeah. I've always wanted to be the best. Um, even with my losses, I take my losses and I will dissect them and I will become way better than I ever was before. Awesome. So you, you mentioned that you are now the Invicta world champion, right? Which mm -hmm. is kudos to you. That's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. What, what are your goals? What are your bigger, what are your long-term goals? And, and, and also tell us a little bit how you goal plan. Like, how do you, how do you goal set? What do you do for that? Um, I have a vision board that I make and I have honestly made, I've honestly completed almost all of my goals. So I have to make another one. But make, make another one, yeah. <laughs> I, I journal things out. I get a calendar I make sure I write down every single session that I'm gonna do and if I don't think that I have enough sessions that day I will make more um 
Okay, so bigger, bigger picture. After, um, after Invicta, well, still in Invicta, I would like to also become the first ever champ champ. Um, first ever atomweight champion and strawweight champion. I know that the UFC is holding off and all that stuff because I'm very small. I understand that um, I'm not even five foot, so I have to prove that I can stand with the best of them and uh well not stand i can grapple with the best of them. Yeah. everyone's gonna go down to the mat but um i've been going out and i've seek i've been seeking the best um training partners i've been flying all around the world to go and train with ufc fighters and uh so ideally i'd like to win the strawweight belt and then go to the ufc and uh, take over there nice all right rad yeah and one of my questions was i think this is a perfect lead-in I know that you love the training, you love the competition, you love the coaching, but what is the, what's the hardest part of your day, of your day, of your daily routine? Because, you know, you got to pay for this stuff. you got to, you know, you've got to make a living. You've got to do all these things. you got to travel and fly. What's, and you got to manage this whole entire, mm -hmm. this organization. What's the hardest part of your day? I would say that the hardest part of my day, um, it is eating the way that I need to eat and when I need to eat. Um, I would say that it is keeping up. Honestly, it is paying myself enough. So I realize that I am pretty self-employed. I work, um, you know, I coach, I'm an artist, all that stuff and okay. paying myself. I don't charge enough because I feel like every single person person should know how to defend themselves. I feel like this is a basic, right. It's a basic need. It's not something that I should be charging it, charging a lot for. Right. So Realistically, that is a big problem that I have. Um, it's not an uncommon one in, in people who people who coach and teach. <laughs> it's not an uncommon one. A lot of us feel like that same thing, like we should be able to give it for free. And we would if we could, but we got to make a living to be able to do it too. So yeah. um, I, I, I hear it's, you. It, I hear you. It's, it's, tough to, it's tough to put a price on your own time, yep. you yeah. know, and to like to look at somebody and say that your time's worth something. And, that's why it's so nice to, you know, have like, like a manager or, <laughs> or work underneath, like maybe have the gym set your own hours and like that, like whoever does mm -hmm. those, it's so much easier when they do it. They're like, oh yeah, while you're yeah. here, it's, you get paid this much. It's like, okay, cool. That's what, that's what you want to do. Those are the numbers you pick. Like, but when you yeah. pick them yourself, it could probably get a little tough, kind of, but I'm you kind know, of... you're the champ. And so recognize yeah. that you're the champ. Soon Thank to be double you. champ. Soon to be. Um, I'm kind of playing the long game here. I'm figuring it all out. Um, I want to be able to take a fighter or somebody who knows absolutely nothing and take them to the top. I have almost all of the connections that I need. And, uh, I don't know. yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds, sounds like you have a lot of plans for the future. And it sounds, sounds like, like you're halfway through your new vision board. And it sounds like, it sounds like MMA, you know, com combat sport is, is, is your life, right? It's, it's your future. So even, you know, you're 25 years old, I think, right. 20, about 25 years old. So even, you know, even 50, you're thinking, I'm still going to be coaching. I'm going to be teaching. I'm going to be training. This is where I, this is where I belong, right? Um, ish. I want ish. to be around okay. mixed martial arts. I would like to um, be a commentator or um, on-screen okay. personality, something of that sort um, okay. around the sport. And uh, yeah. that's awesome. So I have... I have one more question for you and then we'll kind of do a couple of quick like one hitters. Um, okay. And then we have one last question and we'll get you, we'll get you going. Um, do you do any things besides your normal training? Do you, any, do you do anything specifically um, to train yourself in, in mental, in mental toughness? Um, you know, not just going in the gym and kind of grinding <laughs> against somebody better than you, which is obviously going to build your mental toughness, but do you, mm -hmm. do you have any mental tough toughness techniques that you might use that you can share? Um, a lot, actually. Uh, I mean, other than like in the gym or, I mean, I go into, I do hot yoga. That's a lot harder than you might think. Um, I do a lot of meditation. Um, I do ice baths and yeah, I do ice baths. Those are really good for mental toughness. Um, especially after a nice hard workout. Um, yeah. definitely meditation though. I recommend that and journaling. I do a lot of internal work. I feel like that is really where um, the problem lies most of the time. 
No, don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't feel like you're not hitting the question because that's exactly what he wants to hear. If you, okay. you talk for 20 more minutes about all of those things, that's exactly what he wants to hear. <laughs> well, like I, 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 and I, I, I do, I do appreciate the answer. And I think because the reason I asked that question and I hope that that was the answer, which mm -hmm. you had mentioned earlier, is because I think that we're so conditioned in sports over the years to do all the physical things, right? Mm -hmm. We all we all know we got to go to the gym, we got to work on our skill, we got to do our strength, we got to do our conditioning. But when you get to the elite level that you're at, the difference in conditioning and the difference in skill is not that great. It's what's yeah. between the years. And so yeah. I was wondering what you did that you can you know that you could tell our kids, which you just told a lot of mm -hmm. great things. So that's awesome. Okay. When you. when when you do your your meditation and your journaling, is it is it uh, more of like to get your mind clear or is it more like you're repeating, you know, are you like envisioning your success? Are you envisioning the steps you need to take or is it just a complete block out everything you have to like around you? Um, okay, so I do a bit of all of it. I envision everything that is gonna happen in my life. I envision wins to the point where I'm crying because I know that my hand is going to get raised. I just won. I win a fight at least a hundred times before I ever step in the cage with, a, with an opponent. Um, and then if I need to get things out, I will journal it. And that is really to clear my mind. I used to have a lot of performance anxiety. And like before my title fight, I sat down and I journaled seven pages. I'm like, all right, I'm afraid of being successful. All right, we're going to get, get rid of that. We're going to be successful. And um really it's, it's a mixture of all of it um it's really just keeping your mind in the present always be, be where your feet are <clears throat> alicia let me ask a question you mentioned the visualization that you do <laughs> over and over again yeah. and this is something that different people have different opinions about do you also <laughs> visualize the, anything negative that could happen in a fight always you do okay always i have to i have to be prepared for what what can be thrown at me um I mean, in, in some of my past fights, like I've, I've known like, okay, worst case scenario, this person is going to take my back and I'm going to get out of it. Exact same happened exactly how I pictured it. Yeah. Um, it is in practice. I will always put myself in the absolute worst positions more than I put myself in any good positions. I need to work out through the bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think you've hit on just another point too, that, you know, especially in practice, you need to be vulnerable, right? And that's always, when yeah. you, that's when you get to grow. So mm -hmm. that's really awesome. Um, all right, cool. That's that gave us a lot of great stuff there and a lot of things that people can take. Yeah, so people, gotta, are gonna, people are going to love it. I think a lot of people are going to relate. We Thank got you. a couple of just a couple of quick like one hitters. So this is like okay. either or if you had to choose between one of these two things, what would it be? OK, right. Um, so steak or chicken? Um, chicken. Chicken. OK. Dog or cats? Dogs. OK. Mental toughness or physical strength? Mental if you had to choose one. I think, we knew, I think we knew the answer to that one quickly. Mental toughness? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mental toughness. <laughs> the, the beach or the woods? The woods. Skill or will? Um, well. AM or PM? <laughs> PM. PM, okay. And then the last one accomplishment or money i think you answered it earlier yeah you answered it earlier you had a whole conversation about it so that better be the answer mm -hmm. all right cool and then we have one last question that Travis is going to ask you uh which we ask almost all of our guests and we just it's just a fun question we'd love to hear the answer go ahead Travis. so well yep thanks for the big 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 introduction to the final question um so you so can tell we, with father we, and son with the the banter yeah, here we uh we, we like to find out the most unique thing in every person's physical bag. So every athlete has a bag. As wrestlers, everyone has a massive bag because you have like nine pairs of clothes, every all your wrestling mm -hmm. shoes, your headgear. But every athlete has their bag. They bring on game day, fighters too. Mm -hmm. What is the most unique thing to you in your bag? Something that probably other people don't have or something that you can't live without, something you absolutely need. Oh shit! It could be, she, it could be she, superstitious. She's it could blushing. Be she's weird. blushing. It could be, yeah. What is it? I bring crystals everywhere. <laughs> crystals. All right. 
Can and we see you, some yeah. of your favorite crystals? Do you do you have your number one crystal on you? Um, not on me, right? Well, I mean, I do have one right here. It's Moldavite, but um, I bring ones that are good luck. I actually brought some to like XFC tries and gave them to all my friends. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So th- that's you, cool. You, I want. I do have one more question. You said that you. Oh, were I have, in- oh, I have follow. I have follow up questions to the to the crystals. All okay. right. Well, I'm, this is not a follow up question, crystal, but let me ask one question. You said you were into art. Yes. And I see really cool art on your body. I see really cool art around your neck. I see cool art behind you. Is any of that yours? Or what, what, what do you specialize when you say I'm into art? Um, I actually, I paint a lot. So um, I have an Instagram, especially for my paintings. Um, okay. Yeah. Yep. That's great. We'll have to check that out. Go ahead, try no, to I, get a follow-up I, question. I, well, I wanted to know about the crystals. Are they, when you get into like your, uh, cause you have like a workout space to warm up for your, your fights and stuff. Are you, are they strategically placed around the room? Are they lined up in a row? Like where, where, where are the, are they like in your gloves while you fight? <laughs> You punch no. them in your hands. That's illegal. No, um, so I have not, some well, not during the match, but during warm ups. <laughs> no, um, I'm a very fidgety energy. person, so usually I will hold my my crystal and I'll kind of play with it and yeah, whatever. Until you're allowed to punch, to you got to hold your yeah. crystal. Um, sometimes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's well, cool. That 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 is another for like we have. I don't think we've had one person in the 30 interviews, we, no. 40 interviews we've done. Say the say the same thing twice. So that is again another another uh, hey. <laughs> original, another elite athlete original. Beautiful. Yeah, listen, we probably have. I, we literally could probably ask you fifty more questions, but we try to keep these relatively short because mm-hmm. the the attention span attention of our span. young audience is very short these days. Yeah. Um, we'll cu- so we'll, we'll cut that part out because we don't want to. We don't want to. Yeah, we want we won't insult our kids, but. Um, but yeah, no, this has been great. You've given us some really great stuff. Thank you. Do me a favor. Awesome. Like, yeah, thank you. T- tell us how people can follow you on social media or, or whatever, learn more about your career, see how you're progressing and, and about your art thing as well. You train you train outside of Detroit, right? Um, Near Detroit. Yeah, I train out of Brighton, Detroit. Yeah, because uh, yeah, throw, throw, throw a plug for the gym in there too, like wh- wherever we can follow you. Okay, cool. All right. So you can follow me at Alicia Zap on Instagram. Twitter and Facebook and Twitch. Um, and I also post YouTube videos all the time. You can find me there if you ter- if you type in Alicia Zapatella and also my art you can find at Recipe Realm on Facebook and on Instagram. Also, all right. come to my gym, SFS Scorpion Fighting System in Brighton, Michigan. I teach women's mixed martial arts three times a week. That's awesome. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. I, I do guys. have a follow-up question to that because you mentioned it to YouTube. All right, mm-hmm. I went on YouTube, I checked you out, and you were eating like whole <laughs> oranges. What what's up with that? <laughs> um, I I did people love my eating challenge videos and I posted one one bite challenge. And since then people are like, you need to post more. Yeah, I'm hooked on. Who, I'm, who, I'm looking who, for more. Who comes up who comes Thank up you. with the eating challenges? Um sometimes my fans. fans yeah i yeah usually the fans That's what crazy. was what, what was the, what was the toughest eating challenge you've had to do so I, um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know anything about this so okay so i've done one that was a uh, hot sauce mag mad dog that one was pretty hot but then um the eating challenge eating a whole orange in one bite it was that's what i saw with, that's with the I saw. skin on with the skin no, no, I peeled it first. You gotta, you gotta peel it first. I was gonna say yeah. with this, I, I was like, how do you even get that first bite through? I tried an ice cream cone, but I got that one in like three bites. The ice cream I got all in one bite. It's very impressive, actually. <laughs> the 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 faces that you were making with the orange were just they had me laughing. So I said I had to ask you that question because it, it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> that's that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, well, people, people, I'm sure you're gonna get a little little bump bump in uh following after this in a week or two. Beautiful. We'll Thank post you. It. Yeah. So we know what we'll do is we'll we'll do a little um promo for this. Mm-hmm. I'll send it to you. We'll post it up probably tonight, and then this okay. will air Tuesday, like at six o'clock in the morning. So it'll be up there, and Beautiful. I'll show you how to get to it and all that stuff. Yeah. Feel feel right. feel free to repost it out to all your fans. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. will. Thank all you. All right. We loved having you on. Good luck with your career. Kick some ass. We want to see Wait, a double when, champ. When, when's your next fight? When's your next fight? Do you know yet? I don't know yet. I have to. So the one fifteen pound belt is vacant, and then there has to be a contention fight for someone to fight me. So I kind of have to just play the waiting game. 
All right, cool. Well, let, we, yeah, let let it let us know when that is, because I'm sure we'll, we, we'll have people who want to find that out. So, would you do us well, a favor yeah. and and uh, and come back on? You know, when you when you oh, win the next when you're double champ, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We, we have we love to follow your career, and uh, we we try to stay in touch with the people that we interview on this because they've got great stuff going on, and we want to be you know we want to at least be be kind of a part of it. <laughs> yeah, most, definitely. Of, most of the people we've talked to are, are not retired. Like we've talked to some people who are retired at at that uh -huh. point, but. Most people we're talking to are, They're doing, are still, still, climbing. still in the hunt. That's so. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, All Alicia, right. thanks so much. It's great. Great. Yeah, you're, you. You're, you've got great spirit, man. I, I love I love talking to you and uh, a thank lot you. of fun. I had a great well. time. All right, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.